All right, we have an opportunity here, Stephen J. Gray, yes, to do, talk to a gentleman who is. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't uh, even describe in words what we saw this airplane do yesterday. But I did have a chance to arm wrestle uh, Paul Moga the other day, and I took him. So I just want to let you know that I got Max. All right. All right, Roger that. I put him down. All right. Awesome. I, in my dreams, I think. <laughs> anyway, with us this morning is Tech Sergeant, uh, United States Air Force, Jason Schmidt, who uh, is with the F-22 Raptor team. And I was uh-huh. noticing there we saw two of them at Opelika on Media Day. Roger that. Uh, we normally bring uh, two aircraft uh, to each show site just in case uh, we get some kind of uh, maintenance failure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one jet drops out. This way we have a spare ready for us. All right, now tell us about the F-22 Raptor. Now, Stephen and I were noticing that there were signs posted around as the airplane pulls up, and it was like the rock star approaching as, as Moga gets out of the airplane. Uh, and they put up a barrier around it, and there's signs around that says, uh, use of deadly force authorized, and they will not let anybody go near the back end of that airplane. Why is that? Well, um, there's a lot of things on the jet that uh, we just don't want, you know, people to get too close and take certain pictures at certain angles uh, to actually get the design of the aircraft. Excuse me, sir. Tell us a little bit about uh, the the stealth procedures in this aircraft. As far from what I understand, uh, it shows up on radar about the size of a bird. Right. So, so the enemy's thinking there's a bird flying overhead, but you got a bird maybe ha- with a big bomb. Right. <laughs> well, um, uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, just the whole design of the airplane. Everything, uh, every payload on the jet is an internal payload. Uh, every part of the jet is coated, even the canopy. Uh, and just the shape of the aircraft uh, gives it those features uh, to be so stealthy. You know, I want to give a shout-out right now because uh, that aircraft is powered by Pratt & Whitney engines, and we had a chance to talk to President uh, of former president of Pratt, Bill Missimer, who's going through some tough days with his wife, Carol, in the hospital today, listening to us online. I wanted to tell him he's in our thoughts and prayers. But uh, also the uh, stealth technology that uh, was developed on that airplane that's being put into use right now was developed just here in South Florida, in West Palm Beach, at Pratt & Whitney Aircraft right, right there. Right, right. Uh, one thing about, let me say, I can't say enough about the Pratt and Whitney engines. Uh, I work on them. They are awesome to work on. They are a powerful motor. Uh, you're talking 35,000 pounds of thrust, you know, per uh, per engine, which gives the jet 70,000 total. And uh, I can't say enough about them, especially being a maintainer and actually working on the, the motor myself. Tell us a little bit about, about the aircraft itself as far as compared to the other the jets they are, since this is going to be our future fighter. Uh, the electronics on board must be intense. And I understand that the, you can talk about the cockpit. That is not confidential, correct? It's right, a right. display. Yeah, we, what we have in the cockpit is, uh, you know, we do have a heads-up display, and we have uh, several other displays, secondary multifunction displays, uh, where he can get all his information uh, up on the screen. And uh, basically he could take whatever information's on uh, each one of those screens and uh, kind of flip-flop them around and pretty much put them to where, you know, when he's flying, right, he can put them where he wants them. Let me jump in here for just a second. Roger We're that. actually seeing a, a real live rescue here. Not only are we seeing the 920 at the wing doing their thing, but also there's a there was one of the boaters offshore that's having an issue. We don't know what it is. Uh, General Vartan was just telling me the situation, and you're seeing a couple of guys going out from the Fort Lauderdale Beach Patrol to uh, kind of, I guess, shepherd the boat in a little bit. And we're going to see an evac right here in front of us at the show center. Right. They don't. They didn't have the information as to what the injury or illness was, but uh, the Coast Guard again doing its job, uh, getting folks in uh, to a safe venue. Well, let's just hope maybe it's a little too much uh, adult beverage or. Uh, uh, rocking and rolling on the uh, seas, nothing worse than that. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. Okay. All right. Now tell us about this helicopter out here, uh, Gibby, that we're seeing right out here, the, uh, part of the 920. Well, this is one of the HH-60 rescue helicopters, and I believe they may have maybe already picked up uh, an egress uh, pilot. This is what you would see in a search and rescue situation. No country spends more energy in making an air-sea rescue than the United States or any kind of rescue of a downed pilot or someone that's been injured. And you're seeing a a typical type of uh, event where you would have a fighter like the A-10 keeping away the bad guys as these vulnerable helicopters come in to make the pickup. Uh, Normally there'd be three or four more of them, usually called Sandys. The Jollies come in, that's the helicopters, and make the pickup. Now why do they call those Jollies? Well, they happy helicopters? <laughs> well, they, they got their name uh, in the Vietnam War during the time that the Army was doing a lot of this, and the Air Force also had these helicopters. They called them Jolly Greens, Jolly Green Giants. I see. Okay. 
and now the name is shortened. Uh, we're in this uh, European gray camouflage, and uh, they're still called Jollies. All right, as I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, we're seeing some make-believe drama uh, offshore here and some real drama right in front of show center uh, as they're actually pulling one of the boaters uh, off the... Uh, is that the... Uh, it's a female uh, right now. looks like she may have came off of one of the uh, uh, ships that was about a mile off or, or boats that was offshore. Uh, they, right now they've got her on a uh, uh, surfboard, and uh, we got a lot of paramedics and rescue technicians. Uh, Fort Lauderdale Ocean Rescue getting ready to transport her uh, to the hospital as quickly as possible. Well, I tell you what, Stephen, if I'm going to have a boat problem uh, today, and this is the place and uh, in time to have it done because there's enough folks around here to sure make, uh, make a difference. Yeah, they're taking her in right now, and... Uh, uh, we hope the best for her. Well, she's passing right in front of us. It looks like she may have a, some kind of a, a fall injury or something. She's kind of wincing in pain. She's actually on the uh, uh, the Fort Lauderdale uh, uh, lifeguards uh, kind of a surfboard, and they're transferring her now to a, uh, a gurney, and uh, we'll take her away from here. So we hope she's going to be okay. Maybe it was just a bad fall and slip on a boat, something like that. I don't see any, any wounds or any kind of... Uh, tourniquets anywhere on her so we're hoping that that was just it or maybe a little too much heat and water and sun on this beautiful day 